We are all accustomed to use constructors throughout our applications, but recently another approach gained more and more popularity and that is the use of static factory methods. So constructors or static factory methods, that is here the question and from my point of view the answer is obviously static factory methods. And stay with me and I will try to explain you why I tend to favor factory methods instead of constructors. Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video we'll try to understand together what are the pros and the cons of using constructor versus factory methods. And in my opinion there are two very important reasons why I tend to favor the use of static factory methods instead of constructors. And in this video I would like to go through them one by one. So let's start with the first one. And this first one has something to do with code aesthetics from my point of view. And my main problem with constructors is that if you use a bunch of different constructor overloads, they don't express intent. And if you have watched some of my recent videos, you know that I am a fan of writing code that expresses intent. So when anybody looks for the first time on a certain piece of code, that person should understand what that code is all about. And constructors don't allow you to do this because you can't name them. They are, they are all the same. They are just different in incoming parameters. So let's switch over to Rider and see exactly what I mean by that. Here we have this order class and some other classes that would help us achieve what we want in this video. And we see that we ha have here a bunch of constructor, like we have here an order that takes in a customer and it sets the customer and the order date. And we have an order that takes in a customer and a list of product. And last but not least, we have here an order that takes in a shopping cart. So we have here three different constructor overloads that we use for different purposes. However, let's take a look into the consumer, which is this program.cs class where we kind of like instantiate the customer and the list of products in the shopping cart, what we need to kind of like play around a little bit with this order. And we see here that, okay, the first time we use this constructor, the second time we use this constructor, and the third time we use this constructor. But does this tell me anything about the intent of those constructors? Does this tell me anything about the intent of the application itself? Well, no, if I'm looking for the very first time at this code, I just see here a bunch of constructor overloads, but I really don't have any insight about what those constructors are actually intended to express. So let's start to, or let's try to change this a little bit around and let's go back here to the order class. And what if instead of relying on these constructors, we would expose some public factory methods and let's start to create a factory method for each of them. So the first one would be this one that takes in a customer. So let's move here and create a little bit of space and let's add here this public factory method. So it would be something like this. And right now we don't do anything fancy here. The only thing that we do is of course, hey, we want to say that we want to cre create an order from customer. So we already express some intent. Like this method is intended to create an order by having a customer and nothing else. Now, of course, the only thing that we will still need here for things to work, let's make also a private parameterless constructor. So private order something like this and now everything should be fine we shouldn't have any other error messages now let's also take care about this second constructor that we have that takes in a customer and a list of products and here we could have something like maybe create order from customer and products and that would be something like this once again, we don't do any fancy stuff here. We just have this factory method that returns an order, but we name it create from customer and products, which is already expresses some intent about what this constructor actually does from a business rule, from a business logic perspective. And last but not least, we have this order that takes in a shopping cart and that would probably be responsible to create an order based on an existing shopping cart. So let's also fix that. And it would look something like this. Once again, we have this name create from shopping cart. Once again, we express some intent about what this factory method is intended to do. And if we go back here to our consumer, we can kind of like besides these calls to these three constructors, we can maybe also add some calls to the factory methods. And that would be something like this. And if we take a look at just these two blocks of code, like we have here new order, new order, new order, we don't understand anything about the context. What, what do we try to achieve there? And here we have create from customer. 
paid from customer and products, create from shopping cart. So already you see that kind of like the factory methods or the simple use of factory methods express, expresses some intent of our application. And even if I'm for the first time looking at this application and starting with this exact code file, I'll already be able to have some context that, hey, we have probably some customers in the application and we kind of like need a customer to create this order. But then we can also provide a customer and an existing list of products if, if we have it already in the application, or we can just use an existing shopping cart. So I already have the idea that there is a shopping cart that is somehow related, or it has some, well, common things with this order because I can kind of like create this order based on the shopping cart. So once again, from my point of view, these three lines of code express way more intent than these three lines of code. And this is already for me a valid enough reason to use static factory methods instead of constructors. The second reason why I tend to favor static factory methods is that they give you more flexibility as a developer. Now in a constructor, the main problem is that you cannot actually return something. It always constructs an instance of a specific object. And if you want to do some validation, then yeah, if something's not right, you can throw an exception. But then we go into another discussion because I really don't think that throwing exceptions everywhere is a good approach to software writing. So as a developer, I would really love to have a little bit more flexibility about what can I do when I'm instantiating new objects. And I would like to have the freedom, for instance, to be able to return, let's say, a validation result or return a null, for instance, if I go, if I want to go with the approach with returning nulls. The idea is that constructors don't allow you this flexibility. Static factory methods, they allow this, of course. So let's once again move over to Rider and see exactly what the or how this translates into practice. So my second concern here with the constructors is, is that I cannot really perform a real validation. Let me show you, for instance, that I have created here this very basic order validator, which, re which uses Fluent Validation Library. And here we have some very, very basic validation rules just to show you exactly the concept. Now, the problem is that if I go back to the order, I cannot really use that validator here in this order because I don't have an existing order, which I can already validate. So that's why, for instance, I can move into the factory method. And here we can kind of like redesign this a little bit. And what we can do here is for order, for instance, equals new order. And then what we can do here, we can say var validator equals new order validator like that. And then what we can do here is var validation result equals validator dot validate. And we say that we want to validate kind of like uh, the order. Cool. And what we can do here is, of course, based on this validation result, we can, for instance, say that if validation result uh, is valid, so if it is not valid, we can, for instance, throw here new argument exception, but I will kind of refactor this just in a few seconds. And if everything's okay, then we want to return order. So you see that this type of validation is not something that we could do in the constructor. And that's here why this factory method also gives us this type of flexibility that allows us to kind of like, well, do this validation and here throw if we want to do that. But the flexibility that we have with these static constructors or the static factory methods is way much more than that. Because one thing that I want to do here is, okay, you know, probably that I'm not a fan of throwing exceptions. This should be really only be done when we have exceptional cases. This is not really an exceptional case because we can kind of like recover in a certain way or let the consumer know that, hey, you wanted to create an order with the customer that is not valid. And that simply put is not something that we want to have in our application, but that's not really, not really an exception. Now, the problem here is that what we need to do here in this method is we need a way to kind of like return different types based on if the validation is successful or not. Of course, we could use this uh, validation result pattern or service result or object result pattern that kind of like will contain a result and a flag if the result is valid or not. And that is what we could return to our consumers. But one other thing that we could do and leverage the, the flexibility that we have with this static constructor is 
that we don't necessarily need here to return an order. And to just give you an example about this, I will simply use this one off library. And I have already installed the one off package. There is a new get package and the one off library is very cool because it allows us to specify different return times for a method. And that's actually very cool because of course that's not supported by default. Now, if you want to know more about this one off library, Nick Chaps has recently created a video on this, which is very in depth about how this library is used. So I won't repeat all the things that he said there. You will also find the link to his video in the description of this one. So you can go there and check exactly how this one off library works and kind of like have a better feel on what is possible and, and what not. So in this case, what we want to do is, let's say we want to return a one-off and we want to return an order, but we want to potentially also return a list of validation failure, which is what the Fluent Validation Library generates for us. And the thing is that what we can do here is instead of throwing an exception, in this case, I can then simply return validation result dot errors. So we have kind of like solved this problem. So right now in this method, I am flexible to not really return an order, but returning this case a one off. So the consumer can check, for instance, if it is an order, then it can, it can, it can perform the logic that it needs to perform. But if it returns a list of validation failures, the consumer should know that, hey, okay, I have some failures here, so I might need to do something to get rid of those failures and try again. And of course, it's exactly the same thing that we can do for all the other methods. So let me maybe just replace the methods that we had previously uh, with methods that are that are using one off. So let's start first with this one and it would be something like that. And then we also need to implement the third one, which would be something like this here. And yeah, you would see that here there is some repetitive code and there is and probably we would like to extract this maybe in a private method. But yeah, I just wanted to showcase you this flexibility that, that using static constructors or static factory methods actually gives us when compared to regular constructors. And to kind of like showcase how this might work, even let's go here. And for instance, we know that here this order one will not be an order, but it will be a one off. Uh, that could be potentially an order or a list of validation failures. So we might implement some logic based on the potential out uh, outcomes that we know. And this one of library also works with switch statements. So we can do something like this, like order one switch. And if we receive an order, then we write the order to the console. If we receive here an error or a list of validation, we just print the first one to the console. And we can run this application right now. It will build very shortly and it will also return us the result, which I guess for the first case in this one will be, yep, it is the order date. And just to, to have a reference, for instance, if I go to this validator and I just switch this, I don't want this to be three. I want the mini length, minimum length to be five. And as I know that I am using my name, which is only three characters, this, this time it should actually have a validation error. And therefore, in the console, we should see the validation message. And it did this. This is the case. First name needs to be at least three characters long. As a conclusion, I want to emphasize once again that, at least in my opinion, the use of static factory methods has some clear advantages over using constructors. And the first advantage is that you are able to express intent in your code and therefore your code will, will be much easier to read and much easier to understand by others. And the second reason, which is probably more important than the first one, is that static factory methods allow you or give you enough flexibility with the return times and you can really get creative with what you want to do there, as we have done here using that one off library to return different types depending on different scenarios. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you didn't do that already, so that you might discover new content easier. And if you have any question, don't be shy and feel free to head over to the comment section and leave a comment, ask your question, get in touch with me and I would be more than happy to get a discussion going. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.